Welcome to the program. I'm Kerry Watkin. This week, we look at the question of directors and officers' liability and insurance under the new company's bill. Michael Hart, chairman of Denae's Rates, is in studio to discuss this with me. Welcome, Michael. Hi. Michael, to start off with, how does this bill differ from the new legislation when it comes to the liability of directors of companies? Well, I think the difference between the old act and the new one is that uh, this legislation for the first time sets out to codify the responsibilities of directors. So whereas, whereas previously we had a, uh, a common law um, series of duties, we now have those duties set out in, in the legislation itself. Uh, and that's quite a, a big difference. It will mean that directors um, are able to read the legislation uh, understand what their responsibilities are uh, and know much more specifically where they can and cannot act. Okay. Um, and the Act does itself say that the law must be developed in conjunction with the common law of the country, but uh, there is a much more substantial uh, spelling out of what those responsibilities are. Right. In your opinion, is the position of the company director in this new bill which will be the new legislation, more onerous, and if so, why? Well, there's a, a bit of a, a debate about that in the, in the context of the, of the simple issues of liability because the bill doesn't really change many of the common law concepts which have been, uh, uh, have been around for a while and which have been interpreted by the court. But I think it is uh, going to be more onerous, if only because the responsibilities are now defined in black and white in the text of the Act and directors will have to compare, with, uh, compare their conduct with um, the, 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 the very specifically defined responsibilities. Things like fiduciary duties, which have been mm -hmm. talked about in general terms, are now spelt out in the Act. Right. Uh, and responsibilities under the law of delict, uh, which are talked about in general terms, are again now set out in the codified portion of the Act. So I suspect uh, that directors will face uh, much more direct questioning uh, and will be expected to understand and, and comply with their responsibilities in a, in a, in a way which is perhaps more uh, onerous to them. Okay. Also, we talk about the business judgment rule. What exactly is this rule and do you think it's going to form part of this Act? Well, it is in the Act, in, in, in uh, the section dealing with delictual responsibility, what we'd call the Act, the responsibility not to act negligently. What the Act does is it sets out a, a, a definition of, of what conduct on the part of a director will be, will be sufficient for him or her not to be held responsible. And part of that is the so-called business judgment rule, which, which really says that if a director has a rational and proper basis for taking a decision, then he or she ought not to be liable for the consequences of it. It's the interface between what is negligent and what is expected of directors to exercise entrepreneurial flair in managing their companies. Uh, and so a director who exercises a business judgment and has a reasonable basis for doing so and who consults with uh, uh, experts that the company might bring in or who relies upon people who are employed by the company who uh, ought reasonably to know their job uh, will say, well, this may have been a, a, a consequence which we did not uh, foresee but in the context of the decision which took place at the time, my conduct was reasonable. Okay. So, Michael, what steps can a director take to protect himself or herself against such liability? I think primarily they ought now to, to uh, understand the Act um, and to acknowledge what their responsibilities are. Prudently, they will also take advantage of the provisions in the Act which entitle the company to uh, take out insurance to protect both the company and the director personally against the consequences of uh, liability which might arise in the context of the ordinary course of their uh, activities as directors. Um, there is a little wrinkle in that because um, the Act uh, suggests that the uh, insurance may not insure them against willful misconduct or conduct which amounts to knowingly breaching the fiduciary duties. 
Um, and there is a definition in the act of knowing which says not only that you directly know, but also that you might reasonably have been expected to know that your conduct was going to lead to trouble. And that's the wording which has led to the, the recent uh, last-minute amendments to the competition legislation. Mm -hmm. So I suspect that we might see that uh, emerging in, in uh, a late change to this bill. Thank you, Michael. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for tonight. So if you need more information about this interview, please log on to the Tax Talk website at taxtalk.co.za or you can contact them on 0861-829-825. Until next week, goodbye.